Hi last watchers, today's watch is a quartz chronograph that comes courtesy of Danish watch company About Vintage. The About Vintage brand was established in 2014 by childhood friends Sebastian Skolf Regisser and Thomas Giavalgaard Anderson. Apologies for the massacred pronunciation. Sebastian and Thomas shared a love of watches and a passion for classic minimalist design that led them to develop their online of vintage inspired watches. Typically like many new 21st century brands, the duo have a social and environmental conscience that has driven them to offset their carbon footprint with global initiatives that include the ocean cleanup as well as wind power projects in Costa Rica and hydropower in Vietnam. They even have a watch solely dedicated to saving green turtles, I kid you not. It seems you can't be a Danish watch brand unless you have a giving back program with a view to saving the planet or endangered species. About Vintage started their watch company with some relatively affordable quartz powered watches with classic minimalist dials. Yes, I hear you, but before you write them off as just another fashion brand, their lineup now includes some sexy looking automatics such as the 1971 and my personal favourite, the 1926, a Blancpain inspired dive watch. If you've got the cash to splash, then you might even want to take a look at their collaborations with Frédéric Constant that will cost you between three and a half to just under $4,000. Well, they would if they weren't already sold out. Much like their minimalist styling, About Vintage used a similar simple ethos when it comes to branding their watches, as they take their names from the years of horological milestones. For example, their 1815 chronograph is named after the introduction of the chronograph in, yes, you guessed it, 1815. <coughs> Some rounding down may have taken place there, as a quick Google search confirms that the first chronograph was actually invented by Louis Moynet in 1816. The boys may need to change the name of their watch. The 1844, which I have here, is correct, as it marks the introduction of the first chronograph to have a reset facility that enabled successive measurements to be taken. That was a little bit wordy. It was a tool that soon became invaluable for sporting events and artillery strikes, hopefully not at the same location. For clarity, the 1844 has been sent to me free of charge. I'm not being paid for this review and my views, as always, are my own. Let's have a look at the chronograph, starting with its dimensions. It has a diameter of exactly 41mm, an overall thickness, including the crystal, of 12.6mm a compact lug to lug of 46.8 millimeters and a lug width of 20 millimeters. The weight on the supplied leather strap is just under 65.6 grams, a considerable lightweight. The 1844 has an all polished flat round mid case made from the industry standard 316L stainless steel. It's capped off with a thin polished bezel. The only contrast between these polished surfaces is a demarcation line that divides the two. The lugs, which extend and turn down quite sharply from the case, have been cut quite abruptly, which helps keep the lug to lug length relatively short. The right side of the case has a moderately sized, well knurled crown engraved with the About Vintage logo, polished little fishes in a sand blasted sea. It sits between two polished pedestal pushers for the operation of the chronograph complication. The substantial sapphire crystal is a single dome that reminds me of the glass used in a pair of 1970s NHS glasses. Excuse me for showing my age. Although this crystal does come with a bonus of some anti-reflective coating, it's a weighty piece of glass that quickly distorts the dial and loses legibility at an acute viewing angle no doubt historically accurate. Beneath the crystal is a pearl white effervescent Bauhaus inspired dial that even the Germans would be proud of, and this is Dutch. Around its perimeter is a no-nonsense black printed chapter ring consisting of indices for the minutes or seconds which are elongated at the 5 minute markers. There are Arabics 1 through to 12 for the hours and polished steel dots at the 3, 6, 9 and 12 o'clock positions. At the 6 o'clock position, we have a printed Copenhagen, 
the brand's home city, divided by one of the aforementioned steel dots. There are two vertically aligned subdials. The run in seconds sits at the bottom half of the dial, whilst the chronograph minutes resides in the upper half. The running seconds dial has indices every two and a half seconds, with Arabics at the 15, 30, 45 and 60 second markers. At their heart is a painted black stick hand. By way of contrast, the chronograph subdial has a polished metal stick hand that ticks around individual two minute indices, broken up with Arabics denoting the 10, 20, 30 and 50 minute markers. The 60 minute position is decorated with the About Vintage logo. Yes, I know I call them little fishes, but the logo is actually About Vintage's take on the infinity symbol, quite apt for an instrument that marks time. I still prefer the little fishes. For those that need it, there's an acceptable bevel edge frame date window at the 3 o'clock position and some printed text at the 9 referring to the chronograph 1844 designation followed by what I presume is the surname of the brand owners, Skov Anderson. Wholly unnecessary and a bit of a fashion watch faux pas but it does bring some balance and symmetry to the dial. The hands that adorn the 1844 can best be described as a fine spade for the hour and a whip for the minute. Trust me, I did some digging to verify that, but as always, I'm happy to be corrected. The hands are brushed metal, whereas the chronograph stick seconds is polished. The movement within the 1844 is the Miyota 6S11. It's a battery-driven quartz that should give you up to four years of time telling, depending how often you use that chronograph facility. It's rated for accuracy between plus or minus 20 seconds per month, which make it an ideal grab-and-go watch if you're in a rush for that dinner date or late for work. The rear of the watch has a press-on case back with a perfectly aligned polished Copenhagen cityscape silhouetted against a fine sandblasted sky. The middle of that sky does away with the sun in place of yet another About Vintage logo. I have to be honest, it's a good logo, and I'm becoming quite accustomed to it. Below the infinite fishes is some text designed in Copenhagen, and the watch's individual serial number 6679. The 1844 seems to be selling well. Around the case back are details of the timepiece. It's 316L stainless steel construction, sapphire glass, brand name and owners, the Miyota movement, its reference and its chronograph function. There's also details of the watch's water resistance of 5 atmospheres, 50 metres which make it splash proof and suitable for a rainy day. You'd be a brave man to take this in the pool or wear it in the shower. The 1844 came fitted with a deep honey brown Italian leather strap, sporting a polished tang and buckle, decorated with the About Vintage logo. It has two leather keepers on what is quite a stiff strap on my 7 inch wrist. A wear and in period would be advisable. If leather isn't your thing, then don't fret, as About Vintage allow all their customers to choose a second strap at no extra cost, and swapping them out couldn't be simpler courtesy of the fitted bolt action spring bars. You get to choose between variations of suede, croc, rubber or even a mesh bracelet. I opted for their grey NATO steel stripe which has a pearl on vibe and it came with additional quick release spring bars. The 1844 will cost you $349 or 349 euros. Strange. Stranger still is that About Vintage don't list the sterling price, but a rough conversion puts the UK price at a little over £290. About Vintage have very graciously given me a discount code, Last Watch, which you can use to get 15% off any watch on their website. It brings the price of the 1844 down to €296, Euros, or dollars or around £250, which is what you would expect to pay for a similar quartz from a big brand name. I'll add a link and details in the video description below. The 1844 comes with a two-year guarantee and a 30-day returns policy. It came well packaged in an outer cardboard box containing a quality dark brown wooden box engraved with the About Vintage logo and branding. There's a booklet on caring for your watch and an aid to adjusting and fitting straps and bracelets. The magnetically sealed lid of the box opens to show your watch presented on a grey velvet cushion 
and a matching interior. There's a little sleeve area containing additional details of your watch and more care instructions. It's a good package which gives you the feeling that you've invested in a quality product. Even my wife was impressed with this one. So it may very well be the ideal gift for that newbie watch collector. All in the 1844 is an attractive classically inspired chronograph that serves as a reasonable introduction to the about vintage brand. It does have a few niggles. It could be smaller and thinner for a quartz. A flat crystal would help with that and possibly fix the dial distortions but then you'd lose that vintage vibe. The all polished case is just that, all polished. Some brushing may have been appreciated, but I guess this will be a dress piece for many and therefore less likely to pick up scratches. Scov Anderson on the dial, no matter how small, is a no-no for me, but I can understand the excitement of releasing your own watch and wanting the world to know it's yours. All too often, I get a freebie watching for review that disappears into a cupboard somewhere, but I can actually see myself wearing this one. About Vintage seem to be on the right path, and I'm sure there are new emerging brands that would aspire to be in five years where about vintage are now. If the 1844 doesn't quite float your boat, then I suggest you take a look at what else they have to offer. You might be pleasantly surprised. Share your thoughts on the 1844 and the about vintage brand in the comments below. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll be covered free in my next video.